Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! But first, I'm thrilled to be joined by Labour's Shadow Foreign Secretary, Emily Thornbury. Lovely to see you. Hello, Robert. Emily. I've come all that far from your home. Um, since we're on the subject of Brexit, um, if I could just start by really putting to you this question, which lots of Labour MPs uh, and, and supporters put to me, which is, on issues like Syria, you've consulted the members on their views, Lots of Labour members are saying to me, why aren't they being consulted? Why haven't they got a voice when it comes to the Brexit policy? Oh, but they do. I mean, we have this national policy forum process. But there's where... no line which says in the policy... You know, you're, you're discussing all sorts of things that have, an imp have you know, Brexit sort of implications, but there's no particular debate on whether you should be in the customs union, whether, you should, whether, whether, whether you know, the UK should be in the single market, whether there should be a second vote. Well, we've got, a, we've got the National Policy Forum going on at the moment. Yeah. I was there yesterday. Um, Keir is there today. And this afternoon we have, I think, the longest session is going to be on Brexit. So there will be a debate in, in uh, the National Policy Forum at that point. I mean, like, unlike the Tories, but, we do consult our members when it comes to developing our policy. But there won't be a member's position f formulated at the Policy Forum on your Brexit policy, will there? Well... It's, a, it's an ongoing conversation that we have, you know, within the party. And, and it's, as, as, you, as you've said yourself, you know, Brexit kind of impacts all sorts of different areas of policy. Mm. So yesterday I was talking about, about, uh, about development and about the development goals, mm. and we were talking about how Brexit impacts on that. I mean, it, it comes up on, in all different types of facets. And this afternoon we're talking about, in particular, you know, our six tests on Brexit, mm. what it is that we want to achieve as a result of the Brexit negotiations, and we'll be asking the members for their collective knowledge and their collective experience to feed into that. As you well know, the overwhelming majority of Labour members and supporters would like the Labour Party to sign up to a policy of continued membership of the single market and the customs union. My sense is, particularly actually talking to John McDonnell last week about this, that you're well on the way to signing up to that approach? What we do is we, we accept the result of the referendum, we have to leave mm. the European Union. If we're leaving the European Union, then we have to negotiate an ongoing relationship of with course. the European Union. We want to have... We, it, it, we've looked at it and we cannot see a way forward when it comes to Northern Ireland or to, uh, to, to tariff-free trade mm. across Europe without us being in some form of customs union yeah. that probably looks we, very much like the customs like union. Like the current customs union. That's what John McDonald said uh, the, last week. And, that's, you know, and that's, a, that's our position on that. As for the single market, you know and I know that it's very difficult for us to remain in the single market as it currently is because... Nobody can pretend that the referendum didn't include a debate on immigration. And we want to have fair rules and manage migration when it comes to immigration, so we need to negotiate something. But if you could come up with something on what you call fair rules and manage migration that allowed, effectively, the, the UK to retain, essentially, the rights to the single market that Norway has, you, you would be in favour of that? What we want is we want to have a deal which is in accordance with the six tests which Keir laid out and which are in our manifesto and which all Labour MPs signed up to when they stood for election. We have to leave the European Union, but we have to have a deal which, which looks after jobs and looks after the economy. First and foremost, nobody voted to be poorer and nobody voted to lose their job. Now, since we're talking about the Policy Forum, you've been criticised by some of your colleagues for supporting what they saw as the bullying of a senior Labour official yesterday at the Policy Forum. <laughs> You're rolling your eyes. Come on, tell us what happened. So, so the National Policy Forum is an opportunity for the Labour Party to discuss policy. We have some very important policy to be discussing, such as Syria, such as Brexit, such as development. But the, but the papers seem to be interested in there being an argument. So I can go into it if you want to, and it'll take a while. But there is a post for which is chair of the National Policy Forum. She uh, stood uh, uh, down. Sure. There was then an election, or there was then going to be an election for who was going to take over. Sure. It was then realised that you had to have six months, six, six, sorry, seven days' notice before you could I, have an I, election. I, I... The, the, the vice chair then stood up and, and she took various points of order and then spontaneously decided that we should have an election. The chair of the National Executive Committee, which is the overriding body okay, of we're the into, Labour we're, Party, okay, we're into, then we're into, into multi-party territory. You asked I think me, we, no, no, no. If you we're 
we're, answer. We're, 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 we're <laughs> to Monty Python, Tony. But the, the, the fundamental point is that some of your colleagues thought that she was, in a sense, bundled off, you know, in a, in a way that wasn't seemly. Katrina Murray, this yeah. is. Yeah, well... I mean, there were, there were all kinds of allegations. I think there were allegations that she was pushed, that she was shoved, that she was intimidated, yeah. that there was anti-Semitism. One of the, one of the, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, this is just kind of, you know, anyway, you, you, one you, of those you, things. You don't you think know? there was inappropriate behaviour, is Well, I talked to her afterwards and she's, I mean... Listen, know. we've got lots more we to take up with you. We had a, we I had think had we'll a, move on yeah. after the break, but don't go away because there's a more from Emily Thornberry in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. Emily said I couldn't put it to a vote, so she is still here. That's a joke, by the way. First, <laughs> Allegra. Well, Emily Thornbury told you, Robert, that Labour members got plenty of opportunity to talk about Brexit, but we have had a tweet in, top of the stack. Uh, this is Emily Thornbury. Hi, Emily. I'm a party member. I go to ward meetings canvassing, pretty tied into Labour. I absolutely do not feel there's been any opportunity for me to be heard regarding Brexit. So maybe you can talk about that in a second. But look, we do have the Shadow Foreign Secretary here, and she has, I'm sure, developed nuanced positions on the other 194 other countries out there. But it isn't just her views on those countries she has to keep in her head, the poor woman. She has to keep track, a checklist on how Jeremy Corbyn views these countries. Now, Robert and I thought we would just choose through three of the more unique. Um, we have used the Economist Intelligence Unit uh, to guide us. Now, on Venezuela, the Economist it's a sorry, it's an it's Economist Intelligence Unit Democracy Index. What a mouthful. So, look, we've got Venezuela here. Red is authoritarian. The Economists think that Venezuela is authoritarian. In 2013, Jeremy Corbyn had this. He thanked Hugo Chavez for showing that poor, the poor matter and wealth can be shared. Moving, Emily is doing the trademark Thornbury rolling of eyes that you'll all be familiar with. She's doing it right now off camera. It's very disconcerting. Then we go on to. Then, then it's on camera, apparently. You're lucky you at home. Then we go on to Russia. And this is when they tried to annex Crimea from the Ukraine. And at the time, uh, NATO tried to help and Jeremy Corbyn attacked NATO. And then this. This, this week, you'll absolutely love this, Emily Thornbury. This is the allegation that Jeremy Corbyn met somebody who turned out to be a Czech spy. Uh, it has been roundly trou trou trounced by the party this morning. But the point isn't that. The point is it must be absolutely exhausting for you trying to keep track of all of his many different international relations, isn't it? Isn't it? I think it's great having a leader of the Labour Party who's a proper internationalist, who has real interest in what's going on across the world, actually, <laughs> and compare him with Theresa May, who just wants to fight with Europeans. But there is an issue, isn't there, as many would say, about the judgement he's shown in the past in praising regimes that would be widely seen as anti-freedom and, and, you know, Chavez, for example, also destroyed the Venezuelan economy. Um... Well, OK, so that, that tweet goes back to 2013. So that was a very different time. And it was when Chavez was still in charge and when the oil revenues were flowing and when the poor in, when the poor in Venezuela were getting assistance in a way that they're not now. And, and you know, the country is in, in crisis it, it, now. It was, it was still authoritarian. But can I just ask, though, has, has Jeremy changed his view on Venezuela? I think that what Jeremy, would he now repudiate? Jeremy, Jeremy hasn't changed his view on human rights and on the importance of democracy, and he always champions that above everything else, and, and about equality and fairness. And there were things that were happening in Venezuela that should and were being praised by the left across the world. But now, that clearly things are changing in Venezuela, and, and we have criticisms, and rightly we criticise. So, you know, times move on. Has he become more pragmatic, do you think? He's always been pragmatic. I mean, I think the caricature of Jeremy is not one that I recognise. He has always been a pragmatist. Of course he has. And do you think... I mean, he's been absolutely clear that he didn't know that this representative of Czechoslovakia he met was a spy, and, they, and the Czechs themselves have said that this guy disguised himself, but... Do you think it did say something about his judgment that he met this bloke a few times? I think it says quite a lot about the judgment of the British press that they're giving this any airtime at all. I mean, the guy is clearly a fantasist. If he wanted to extract information about the British government, he wouldn't necessarily go to a backbench MP. Now, very importantly, John McDonnell has defended himself against the charge that he was used by the Czechs by saying he's never been to Guildford. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think as, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a Guildford person. <laughs> I know why everyone's got every, you know, out for Guildford. No, he's been to Guildford <laughs> once, he said. He's only been... So that, and, and, and he defies anybody to prove he's been there more than once. I mean, this goes, just goes to show... It is really just rubbish, isn't it? I mean, this is what the Tories were chucking at us last year. It but got why will nowhere. nobody stand up for Guildford? And why will no-one stand up for Guildford? I will stand up for Guildford. Well done. There's a lovely <laughs> to see you, Emily. And, uh, uh, so I'm now uh, going to talk to Jess. And... I have never been to Guildford. <laughs> oh, my God. Shame <laughs> on... Guildford on Friday. Shame <laughs> on you, is all, you can, is, all, <laughs> is, is all I can say, Jess. Um, look, the... the, the, the as, as you know, one of our viewers has, has said a Labour member, he feels he's not being listened to mm -hmm. on Brexit. You presumably get this all the time from Labour supporters and members, that the yeah. problem with the policy is, you know, they, they were consulted on Syria. They're not yeah, they had a direct email from yeah. Syria. Um, You'd like I mean, to see the same. They don't necessarily draw that comparison. It would be wrong no. to say that. Um, but, yeah, I think lots of Labour members feel that they're not being asked their opinion on Brexit. They don't feel that they're, bit, they're being consulted. I, I do get it all the time. It would be a lie to say anything else. And where do you think the party will and should end up in terms of a position on Brexit? Do, I mean, are you one, for example, who thinks that Labour should back a second vote? Oh, no, at the moment, I am not a second voter because I know I go out and I door knock every single yeah. week and the last thing the people where I live want is another election. Yeah. They've got election fatigue and they think we should get on with our jobs. And so I totally back the British public on that. Mm. Um, I don't think that there is, ap there is appetite for another election. I do. I hope, wh wh whether it is what I think will mm. happen or not, I, I, I can't really say. I hope that we go to a position of staying in the customs union, staying in the single market. Um, as Emily has said, recognising some of the issues about immigration, which I actually think that we can do in those, in, in those systems. And, and, and you think, because I imagine quite a lot of your constituents are worried about what, you know, free movement, as it were. You, 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 you... I think they are. It doesn't come across, actually, as much as you might imagine. And considering I live in a Leave constituency, but I also live in a Leave constituency with a huge amount of immigration, so actually they're less fearful about immigration because they are exposed to different sorts of people. And no doubt about it, there are some who are, you know, concerned. But actually, I think those concerns are much more about general immigration, not European immigration. It's not as nuanced as that, actually, is yeah. the reality. I've been